Welcome back to the homestead everyone. We're so excited tonight to get started building our grower solution Quonset greenhouse. It's super easy to put together. We're gonna take you through it step by step. Let's go. I'm loving this company so far. They are very, very organized. Look at the efficiency with which they pack their greenhouse uh, hardware. Everything else is packed the same way, but it is broken down piece by piece for you and labeled very clearly. Well, as you already saw, we have our base or our pad for our greenhouse. Everybody's property is gonna be different, so you do what you need to do to get a nice flat area for your greenhouse. And then from there, of course, we covered it with our DeWitt Sunbelt Weed Barrier. This stuff is awesome. I think it's rated, this one is rated for 10 years and it's not gonna let any weeds through into our greenhouse. Now, once you get your foundation set, once you get the area cleared for your greenhouse, wherever it is, now we need to set our corner stakes. And that is really important to get those perfectly square. So let's show you exactly how to do that. So I talked about it a little bit in the last video and that's using tr basic trigonometry to do uh, your layout of your corners. And that's A squared plus B squared equals C squared. But the very first thing you need to do is lay out your long side wherever you want it. So this is our long side here. Our Quonset hut is 40 feet long, so we've got our tape laid at 40, and we've got it measured parallel with our garden fence over here. So it's the same distance all the way down. This is where we want to put our first two stakes. So we're going to put, obviously, one at zero and one at 40 feet. Now, for us to get those stakes in the ground, we are going to have to burn holes in our weed fabric. So a simple torch like this is all you'll need, and it's just going to take a real quick touch with that torch, you'll open up a hole big enough for your stake. So before we burn those holes, what we're going to do is we're going to take all of our ground stakes here and we are going to mark them six inches from the end. And we're doing that because these ground stakes need to be driven into the ground a good 24 inches. They can be driven in a little bit farther, but 24 inches is the recommended depth that you drive them into the ground. So mark all of these six inches from the end because they're 30 inches. So additionally, on each ground stake, we're actually gonna mark at five inches from the top as well. What we're gonna do at five inches is put our contractor's twine, which will give us the ability to level everything perfectly. So this black weed berry fabric is nice because you can see a mark on it from either a white crayon or this welder's marking crayon right here. Just mark where you need to mark. Let's burn a hole in it. So they send you something in this kit, which is really nice to be able to pound these stakes in, and that's this. It's a milled pounding block. It fits right here in the top of the stake, and it will help to keep this nice and round while you're pounding it in with your sledgehammer. So they say if you damage this a little bit, you can just cut it off. If your bow doesn't slip inside properly, just take a little slice off, and it should go down in there nicely. But this should prevent any damage happening at the top of your stake. So the best tool for this is usually a three pound sledge, but as you can see, I cracked the handle off of mine. I'll probably do a video in the near future on how to re-handle this thing, but I'll have to use my eight pounder. Now remember, we're gonna drive it all the way in to that six inch line. Now it's important to keep your stakes plumb or level in the up and down direction. So having a little magnetic pipe level or a little magnetic straight level like this that just sticks to the side is a good thing. However, of course, once you start pounding on it, the level just goes flying off. So just try your best. Now that tool did a good job at keeping things nice and round at the top of the stake. I'm not gonna drive these in all the way to start with. I'm gonna put most of them in and then adjust them as I need to go just to give me a little leeway. Now we have a nice straight side to start with. We need to get our first corner and to do that, we use that three, four, five method or the basic trig A squared plus B squared equals C squared that I talked about earlier. So starting over at our first corner right there, we're running our side length at 20 feet off of this tape. And then all the way over at our other corner over there, we are running another tape measure over here to this corner. 
So in our case, the square root of 2000 is 44.7, which equates to about 44 feet, nine inches. So we are going to match up that 44 feet, nine inches with our 20 feet from our other stake. And this is exactly where we are gonna put that other stake. So we're gonna do the exact same thing on that last corner post, and then we are gonna double check our measurements and move on to all the ground stakes on the sides. So to check if everything is square, you need to go from your third corner that you did and come all the way over here to the last corner, and it should be exactly 40 feet to the center. And that's what it is, perfect. Okay, y'all, now that we have our corner stakes in, we need to run our contractor's twine around the outside of them. And we're gonna do this to keep our sides straight when we pound in our ground stakes to receive our bows along each side. Now make sure when you are tying this contractor's twine that you keep it to the outside of the uh, stake here. So as you can see, our contractor's line is to the outside of the stake and any other stake that we put inside of this line is gonna align perfectly with our corner stake. Now we are going to make a mark every four feet along that contractor string, burn a hole and drive our stakes to the inside of that string. We're gonna use a line level on the ends. And the reason we're gonna do that is we want things level in this direction. If there's a little tilt in the longitudinal direction, that's no big deal. But if the end wall is tilted up or down, that's gonna cause issues for your door and the way the greenhouse sits. It's not gonna be a good thing. So make sure your ends are level using that uh, line level. We've got our ground stakes aligned on the side. Time to get those bows together. It's time to assemble our bows, but there's a few tricks that you need to know to assemble them. Let's show you what those are. Okay, the first thing is to find a very flat surface to assemble your bow. And the reason for that is so you don't get waves in it. Now your flattest spot is probably going to be on top of your greenhouse pad, but if it isn't, try and find one. Now what we're gonna do is just slip the crimped end into the other end right here and we're gonna secure everything with these tech screws that they give you. They call them tech screws. It's just a self-tapping metal screw. Now you don't wanna do that on the top. Make sure you do that on the side because if you do that on the top, then you're gonna rip your plastic. So on the side or on the bottom is the best place for it. So an important tip on setting these bows in your ground stakes is to measure up the side and mark the same distance on each bow. Now I'm gonna mark at seven inches because I've talked to a few others who've actually purchased this greenhouse. They say that it goes in about good seven or eight inches. You wanna mark that same distance on every single bow on every single side. That way everything is gonna be nice and even along the top for your center purlin and your end walls are gonna fit perfectly. Now the next step is of course, inserting your bows into your ground stakes. Now, this may be a two person job. I'm actually gonna try it on my own. I'm gonna try everything on my own first on this entire greenhouse project to show that it may be able to do be done with one person. If I can't do it, then I will go get help to set these. I'm going to give it a shot first. It can be done. It's better with two people, but it can be done without that much of a problem. So to make this a lot easier, I recommend setting up an assembly line. It's going to be way, way easier. Put all of your arches or bows together and just start drilling like crazy. So 
So we're going to secure our bows to our ground stakes using this tech screw. Best way to do it is come in at a 45 here. You can't have it on the outside because you have a ledger board that's going around the outside, a treated ledger board. So right here at a 45 is perfect. Once we are done with all these, we'll show you how to put up that center purlin. Okay, time to do our center purlin. You're gonna need two ladders for this. You're gonna need a 10 foot tall ladder so you can set the end of the purlin on it or each section of the purlin and you will be able to reach the end to screw it in with a shorter uh, step ladder, a six foot ladder like this. But our purlin is sitting down here at the ground. Let's show you exactly how to measure it out. Okay, so from here we are gonna start with the end of our purlin. There's four sections that are 10 feet long and you wanna start where it's flush right with your end bow right here. So we're gonna start flush and then we are gonna mark the center of every single bow all the way down. So when you get to the other end, mark your edge, not center line on this one, but the edge. And that's the edge of the bow, not the edge of the stake. So it's gonna be in a little ways from your stake. You're gonna have some extra here. Cut that off with a bimetal blade with a sawzall. So now we have our purlin cut off at the end and marked for each bow. It's time for us to hang it. We're gonna hang it on the end with this pipe hanger. That is gonna go right here on this end. This is gonna align with the outside of that end bow, remember. And you're, we're gonna drive a tech screw in through the bottom here and two through here to secure it to the bow. So once we have our end in place, we're gonna hang it with these special hangers right here. Imagine that this is the bow. They're gonna go over the top of it like this and then clamp together with this little carriage bolt. We're gonna align those marks that we made with the center line of each bow. Let's get up there and show you how we do it. So I drove the screw into the pipe clamp first and now I'm going to put it and align it with the center line on the bow. It should look like this, with your purlin flush with the outside of your first bow. So this is how it will look at the top. Your purlin's gonna go through this portion of these clamps. These both are gonna loop up and then you're gonna secure them on both sides like this. And of course, that mark I made on the ground on the purlin lines up with the center of this bow right here, which also lines up with the center mark I made on the bow. Well, there you go. That is exactly how you set up the initial structure for a Grower Solution Quonset greenhouse. Now ours happens to be 20 by 40. If you go wider like a 24, you'll have to do actually two purlins and they will be at the 10 and two positions. So just remember that. If you have any questions, please leave them for us in the comment section below. We'd be happy to answer them for you. Now go check out this video right here, which shows you exactly how we built that metal chicken coop over there. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye.